Hey everybody, it's Stuart with Juan on the Diamond. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2021 Gerard Bertrand Orange Gold. This is a lot here, so I'm going to have to read the back of the bottle because there's just way too many groups for me to remember off the top of my head. It's 25% Chardonnay, 15% Muscat, 15% Viognier, 15% Grenache Blanc, 15% Chenin, and 15% Roussan. Like I said, I, there's no way I would remember that. However though, let's take a look at this wine. I guess I could also mention, uh, I did take a look at some production notes on this just because I wanted to see, is the orange color based off of the blend or is it part of the process, the actual winemaking process? And the answer is yes to both. Uh, so it, there is elements of the blend that are gonna contribute to the color. Uh, but the other thing about it is, is this was macerated with the skins and the stems, which skins, okay, cool. Like I'm not that worried. Stems is a little bit worrying to me because there are a lot of not very flavorful compounds that can be extracted from the stems uh, if you're not careful. So uh, I'm hoping it was a, a gentle maceration on the stems because otherwise this would get taste kind of green and it kind of get a little funky here. But I mean, we won't know until we take a look at it. So let's start with the color though. All right, from a color standpoint, I'm gonna give you a pale orange. No artifacts, no cloudiness. On the nose. Okay, so this, this is promising because I'm not getting some of those green elements and the stringent elements that I would get if they were hard pressed with the stem. So that that is nice. It feels like they actually cared about this one. So this is a huge range of primary notes here. So I'm getting a little hint of like a red apple, a little bit of like an Anjou pear, but then it goes hard into the tropical and the citrus. I mean, I'm getting lemon, I'm getting like a tangerine-ish, orange-ish note. There's a little bit of, it smells like mango. There's some melon notes. There's a cantaloupe that's popping up in here. There's a little bit of like a white peach, which I know those things aren't necessarily tropical, but I mean, this, like I said, it has a wide range of fruits. There's also like a touch of guava. Yeah, this is really, really wide ranging here. A little bit of lemon. Yeah, anyway, how's it taste? Medium body wide, low tannin. You can taste the tannin on here. It is slightly, slightly sandy, and it is there. However though, my concern with the greenness, it does show up on here a little bit on the palate, especially whenever you're going into the mid palate. Yeah, there is that little bit of that greenness, but it's not super strong. It's just noticeable. It's kind of like whenever you have like a Cabernet Franc that's been blended with with other reds. You, you can tell that there's a little bit of greenness there from the Cabernet Franc, but it's not like crazy. It's, it's, it's not like the defining characteristic. Uh, another thing too is there is a slightly floral note that's coming out of this as well. Yeah, it's like a, kind of like a, a citrus blossom. And it's, it, it kind of aligns itself with that orangish lemon kind of note that comes out. Yeah, it has more of a perfumey element than like a juicy or oily or bitter element like you would get uh, like from the straight fruit itself. And the the primary fruit elements within this wine itself are kind of ranging from like being ripe to being kind of sour. It just depends on what element you're tasting at the moment as to where that kind of plays out. In terms of the other characteristics of the wine, the wine's medium bodied, medium plus acid, it's dry, it has a medium finish. That's probably it. So let's get to the blick. So from a balance standpoint, full point. Length, medium finish, half a point. Intensity is both medium on the nose and the palate, so half a point. And in terms of complexity, I wasn't expecting any tertiary in 2021. And uh, in terms of the fruit characteristics, I'm, I mean, you just have so much fruit. I don't know if I was expecting any secondary. I didn't detect it. This feels like it's a very kind of fresh oriented wine with the blend. Um, but I, because it's not there, though you have so many primary characteristics, I'm gonna give you two thirds of a point here. Once you add everything up, I'm gonna give you good. You're, you're kind of leaning closer towards the very good, but I'm not gonna give it to you because of the greenness. Those green elements that are there, I, don't, I find them a little bit distracting when I'm trying to find some of the other fruit notes and really focus in on those. 
I've had orange wine before. I'm not a hater of it. I know some people are, and I know some people thought it was or think it's a fad. Um, I, I don't really care about those kind of things. I'm just tasting it to see if I like it. If it didn't have those green characteristics, I would probably say you're good to very good, but because those green characteristics pop up so frequently when I'm taking a sip, I'm just going to say you're good, but you know what? There have been worse wines on the channel. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's review, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Gerard Bertrand Orange Gold? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another review from Wine on the Dime.